Hello everyone! Today's video is a body painting of a traditional vigil which takes place normally on the Day of the Dead, which is fast approaching, in Mexico. This time I haven't taken into account the anatomy of the human body at all, so I've just seen my chest and my neck and face as a bare canvas and I've just painted a scene where the women of a family are standing right around a grave and then the soul is lifting up towards the sky. I do this sort of thing every year. I do have Mexican family, so this is kind of an homage to them and their culture. So I'm starting with my aqua color in black. This is by Cryolan. These are extremely reliable colors. This is water-based, so it sets matte and it doesn't budge at all. Now, I'm by no means a painter. I'm doing this in a completely amateur way. I basically stopped experimenting with color when I was around 12 years old, so ever since then I've been sketching on paper with pencil which is my comfort zone so what I'm trying to say is I might not be the perfect person to give you advice when it comes to art and painting but I can just tell you what products I'm using what concept I'm basing this off of so right now I'm combining blue with a little bit of white I want to start off with a light blue for the sky where it meets the horizon and then as it's moving up it's going to be turning darker and darker until it ends up completely black after combining the blue and white, I'm moving on straight to the blue, so this is pure blue that I'm using, and then of course I'm moving to the black. This is going to layer perfectly on top of each other. Needless to say, I need to cover everything that is exposed on myself. So that includes the ears, the eyes, the lips, and just because I want everything to appear as matte as possible, I'm also going to set it with a little bit of matte black eyeshadow. This is pitch black, so I'm setting everything on my face with this, and next I'm combining the black with the red. When I say combine, I mean I am activating both colors with water and I'm dipping my brush into both until I'm happy with the ratio of red and black. And this is creating this burgundy, which is going to stand for the ground on the graveyard. The further back the image gets, the darker it gets, and as things come towards the forefront, they're getting lighter and lighter. So I'm starting to use some yellow. I'm not gonna use it by itself. Instead, I'm just dipping the brush that I used for the black and red. So the brush that I used for the burgundy, I'm dipping right into my yellow, and that is giving me this shade of brown. Normally, the tombstones would be I guess marble or a grayish or even white shade but just because they're lit by the candles and all the lighting is very very warm we can't see it right now but I'm going to add it in a little bit I'm guessing that everything is going to have this warm wash of color on it I thought I would also add a little bit of purple in there this is again water-based so very matte very reliable I'm filling in the skirts or the garments of the ladies I hadn't decided early on what type of people I was going to draw, what age or what gender or what they were going to be, but of course they ended up as women because that's what I tend to draw usually. And at this stage all I'm doing is filling in the gaps. I don't want any part of my skin to be exposed, of course. So just like a little kid would outline their drawing and then they would go in and fill it in with color, this is exactly what I'm doing. It is a simple outline of all the figures and all the objects and bits you want to have on there only after I fill them in I'm going in with some shading so the way I perceive shading is little brush strokes I always think in terms of pencil shading so I'm going back in with the black and I'm kind of contouring all the little nooks and natural dips and texture of whatever objects I see on there including the people so when I'm saying I'm contouring I mean I'm deepening up mostly the outlines but also the center in certain parts of the graves and the ground and the little red bushes themselves just so that looks a little bit more realistic. By no means am I aiming to create a realistic painting because that would have been an unsuccessful task right off the bat. So we're going to go for this more childlike appearance on the whole painting. Of course I'm adding the crosses on the gravestones that are peeking through the horizon and I'm going to shade the faces of the people as well. So like I said, this type of color is absolutely great, very reliable, but I'm moving on to my cream colors as well. So this is like oil painting. This is gonna be much more vibrant, much more potent and pigmented. So the more I layer my aqua colors, the more translucent they're going to get, which is not what I'm going for. This is why I'm moving on to my cream colors. And the first thing I'm gonna do with them is I'm going to use the red to create the candle holders. 
Next, I'm moving on to the yellow for the flames themselves, so the actual candles. These are going to be shining very bright regardless of where they are in the frame. So, of course, whatever's in the forefront, again, is a little bit bigger, but they're also filling in the horizon, and that is the same kind of pattern all over the ground, which is kind of tying the whole thing in together, I think. Also, the fact that I'm literally painting yellow dots all over gives it this more fun and ornate feeling. And of course, I'm using the same yellow to highlight the actual people that I've drawn. I'm not only going to highlight their faces, but also their clothes. The logic I'm following is pretty simple. Whatever is facing the candles is shining brighter, so it's yellow. And whatever's facing away from the light is fading in the shadows. Next, using a stippling sponge, I'm just going to decorate the little red bushes and I'm going to highlight the tombstone itself before I move on to the clouds in the sky. So I'm using a very big flat brush. I'm dipping it into both my black and my white so it gives me these streaks that look like clouds almost. And then I'm dipping straight into my white and I'm just creating this female figure. In my imagination it's kind of a soul which is flying up towards the night sky. The little white lines starting from the graves and moving up are supposedly more souls that are following that big one in the center. So that is kind of my focal point. I'm also adding a few stars and that is it for the finished Day of the Dead body painting look. Now this took about two and a half hours to complete and it took another half an hour to wash off in the shower, but it's all worth it as a nod to this wonderful tradition that I wish I knew more about. So if you do, please pop your information in the comments down below. Of course, if you try it, show me a picture on Instagram. I would love to see how you interpret this type of look. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.